him tonight, and I'm so thankful for his gift.
been there for me in so many ways. But anyway, maybe I'm getting sentimental in my old age, but uh, those are the kind of thoughts that went through my mind the last few days. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what accumulation you've got in this earth, how much houses and land you've got, Amen. but if you just got just a few friends, you're, you're really rich. Amen. Amen. A few, uh, just a few friends just walking the walk with you Truth, and understand what you're going through and you can go pour your heart out to them and bear one another up, bear one another's burdens. I tell you, we're rich if we have that. And we do have that. And I feel that here. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that. Yes. Amen. It's, it's, uh, it's, just, it's, it's good to have a foundation. And as I get older and I look, I, I told uh, someone yesterday, I think it was Joe Gwynn. I hadn't seen Joe in a long time. Joe was a bass man. He played bass with him many times. He said, you don't know who I am. And I said, oh, yes, I do. I said, I said, you, you're ugly enough, I would never forget you. <laughs> and uh, he just laughed. And uh, he's a sweet old guy, let me tell you. And we got to talk about old times and old things. But uh, I've got a little white hair, but he's snow white headed. But I said, wow, Joe, you, you're getting old. I said, I'm glad I ain't old 
you. <laughs> but uh, uh, but anyhow, those years come and go, and and uh, you, we're all going to come to the end of our journey somewhere along the line. Yeah. And it won't matter how many houses you have to leave behind, or cars, or things for people to fight over, or how much money in the bank, or no money. It doesn't make any difference. Death is a great equalizer. We came in this world naked, and that's how we're going out. And that's just the way that it is, folks. But the main thing is, are we ready to uh, for that for that journey to cross over Jordan? I sing that old song a lot of times. I want to have to cross Jordan alone. I love that. Yeah, I love that old song too. My mother used to love that song. I've sung it a lot of funerals. I I sung it at Carol's funeral. I sung it at her aunt's funeral. I sung it at Jack's funeral. I sung it for a lot of friends and uh, my mother, and she loved that song very, very much. And it's true, we won't have to make that Jordan alone. So when the darkness I see, he'll be waiting for me. I believe that, children, you're so sure as I'm sitting here. And so I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of death. Death will <coughs> scare me to death. Please uh, ignore the bandages on my nose. <laughs> Being a bleeder, <laughs> I nicked my nose this morning. Now, how's a guy <laughs> missing mustache and hit his nose? I was so careful, and I was almost done, and I nicked that nose, and I spent an hour trying to get that to stop bleeding. And it was, uh, I guess it's just the devil trying to get me to do my, from doing my job here, but it don't work out. He's just had to stand and hold a hand to you about do that. Amen. That's right. He don't know that. But anyhow, let me get in the word here. This is good. Can we raise our hands to God this morning? Is anybody afraid enough to raise your hand? Amen. It's a, it's a sacrifice in the Lord that He's well pleased with it. He's well pleased as you raise your hand unto God. Father, we love you today. We're thankful for your blessings in our life. We thank you for the word of God, which is able to save our soul. God bless us today. And the churches everywhere where men have got their hands raised. God, we thank you for your blessings. And we just thank you that we know you. Thank you for the spirit that we feel here already today. God, just teach us our ways and feed our, our spiritual man. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And of all that you do today or this week, this is the most important. You may not realize it. And a lot of men forsake it. But the Bible said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But the more so, as you see the day approaching. Amen. And people say, well, they think i got to go to church all the time. Mm -hmm, that's right. That's right. <laughs> the more so. Right? All right. You only got a, a, a certain number of days you're going to spend upon this earth. Did you, right. did you understand that? Yeah. There is a, there's a time appointed. And when that appointment comes, that is one appointment you will keep. I say that a lot of times at funerals. That's, that's, that's one appointment you will not miss. And it's appointed, it's already appointed to man once wants to die, it said. And after that, the judgment. And those of us that's come into God, we're, we're hoping to escape that judgment. Uh, uh, our judgment is early. We got an early judgment. The judgment we got is a wonderful judgment. It begins at the house of God. Our judgment is going forth right now. Did you know that? As the word of God goes forth, you say, Amen, you're judging it. <coughs> Or if I, I hit something real hard, you say, oh, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guess what? You just passed judgment on yourself. You got to change some things. <laughs> you ever say, oh, me? I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's why that's why a lot of people don't like to come to church. Because they'll, they'll see their self. When we look into this, we see a darkly, but we, we begin to see a man in there. And guess what? The man in the mirror is me. That's when he saw. I love that song. It's true. Uh -huh. The man in the mirror is me. You begin to see yourself. And when you really begin to see yourself, you might not like what you see. And that's when you got to change some things in your life. Amen. And that, that process uh, goes all the way through. I, I never quit seeing myself. About the time of day, I got me straightened up real good that I see something else I don't like. And that's what the Word of God does. Amen. It'll re it's good for reproof or rebuke, instruction in righteousness. And nobody has to do that rebuke. I mean, the Word will rebuke you. Wanna, oh, God. Oh, God. I tear that part out and throw that away. <laughs> no, it should eat the whole roll. you got to eat it all. you got to take the bitter with the sweet, right? Oh, yeah. 
And, and, and God is a good Father. He knows yes. how yes. to correct, oh, chastise. Oh, Amen. Amen. And, boy, He talks with blessings if we receive chastisement. Uh -huh. And he that will not receive chastisement is a bastard, not a son. That's right. So we all got to be chastised, and the Word will chastise us. And I've said this through the years that I've learned to love it even when it beats me half to death. Because I love truth. Yes. I like living right. Yes. That's what they used to call it when I was a kid. They didn't call it getting saved. They said living right. Amen. Uh, my boss, I used to ride with him work and say, well, I, I like to be living right. I like, that's what I used to say all the time. I wish I was living right. <laughs> Sometimes I felt like saying, well, I wish I was too. You know, because I, he, even being saved, I, I wasn't living right. Uh, I had a kind of a rocky start, like some of you may know about, uh, trying to find myself. Well, I'm right here, but I had a hard time finding me sometimes. I'm right here, but I, I don't know. Somehow I felt like I was on a journey somewhere. Uh, taking the scenic route, as I say, Brother Mark. Picking, I ain't picking on you now. <laughs> Good, there wasn't nothing there. That's why I'm hoping you catch nothing. There wasn't nothing there to catch. Wasn't well, nothing about seeing Cohen County. But every time I look at you, you, you say, he's on me again. I'm not going to bother you. <laughs> I love it more right there. <laughs> I love this first verse. It Blessed is the man. I, two things I'd like to teach you this morning. If you notice in your Bible, I don't know whether yours has got it, but the, the Thompson Chain Reference has it, the is is in italicized. It's little squiggly letters. You ever notice that? That means emphasize this word. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man. He is blessed. You is blessed. <laughs> you understand that? Sometimes we don't feel blessed. <laughs> Sometimes we don't feel blessed, but the Word assures us that we is blessed. <laughs> blessed is the man. There's no question about it. We're blessed. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now I can talk for a half day on this right here. There's a lot of people when they get unhappy with the church or unhappy with their walk or whatever, they'll hunt up some old half-baked Christian that never has been stable in church and say, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think he thinks? He thinks everything is negative. Uh -huh. That's why he don't walk any better than he does. That's why he ain't in church. But they do it every time. They don't want to come and talk to someone that's living day in and day out. Someone they truly admire in the Lord. Uh, for one thing, they, they got kind of a fear of them or something. I don't know why. Uh, they begin to think you're way up there and they're way down here and it's not so. No. And, you know, uh, and, and I hope I hope we have attained a certain level of, of competency, you know, in this thing after after 50 years. I'd hate to think I hadn't reached a certain level, but I got news for you. In God, I'm not any higher than you all. I'm just a sinner saved by grace trying to do what God called me to do. And it's all right to give honor to the ministry, but, but uh, please do not worship the, the ministry. A lot of people do. Oh, they'll lift you up. Oh, that brother bad. I get worried when they start doing it. He's a wonderful man. He's a wonderful man. He's a wonderful He's a man. That's what he is. And that man, there's a lot of other stuff comes along. Sometimes he ain't so wonderful. If you don't believe me, ask Daisy. She can tell you. <laughs> he is wonderful. And I want to be like him, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. On earth I long to be like him, the old song said. So he's, he's the one to point to and to idolize is the Lord Jesus Christ. We, we lift him up, isn't that right? Amen. I don't want anybody lifting me up, but I know what I am. I know where I've been. I know my failures as well as anybody. I know what, everything I've lived up, I've had to live down. And the living up's great, but the living down ain't so great. And be, uh, be uh, not deceived. If you live it up, you will live it down. Amen. And, and it's a... Uh, it's hard, and I know in a lot of ways as I, as I uh, think about this little church, we've been here uh, 21 years, and I know that you, uh, some of you had to suffer through uh, my fame, uh, my, uh, not fame, was uh, infamy. Deep fame. Is that what they call it? Infamy? That means fame and ain't so good. It's infamy. <laughs> <laughs> That's notoriety that it's not all that great. That means all the mistakes I've made years ago. 
And they'll tell you, that ah, that Pat Davis, he's this and he's that. I mean, there are people tell you real quick, if you don't know, just ask them. They'll tell you just exactly what I am. <laughs> uh, but thank the Lord, I, I, I know what I am. A sinner saved by grace. And it wasn't for the goodness of God, I could not stand before you today. That's right. And there was a time I thought my ministry was gone. But God in His goodness, His infinite goodness, because right. His gifts and callings is without repentance. Right. <laughs> Once He gives it, He don't never take it back. Now you may not accept it, or you may never find yourself back above it. You can walk under, you can walk under the load of that guilt, uh, you know, all your life if you want to. But somewhere you have to stop and say, thank God, I know he, He's forgiven me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm free today. I feel free. Yeah. I don't feel that. But there was a time in my ministry I was halfway apologetic for everything I did. Because I knew that I'd fail God miserably and I didn't feel worthy to stand before Him and do what I was called to do. And the first couple of years of here in this church, I was kind of in that realm. Uh, you know, and of course... I've told this story many times about the old gentleman that drove up out there and he, uh, I was just sweeping off the porch and sweeping and walking, uh, had the doors open and, and was trying to get her ready, you know, for service. He drove up out there and he, he said, well, he said, I just had to drive down here and see if this was true. I heard you was opening this church. I said, well, yeah, that's right, here I am. Well, I'll tell you right now, I said, I won't be here. <laughs> And uh, he began to dress me down and gave me every reason as to why I shouldn't be doing this, you know. So apparently he knew about me. <laughs> he knew something about me, didn't he? <laughs> the old gentleman, bless his old heart. And it hurt my feelings. I mean, hell, I, was, I just I just got nerve enough to, to, to face the world, with, you know, with everything. And God pushed me in the corner. I couldn't say no. I had to do it. I didn't know. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Mm -hmm. And of course the thing that the, the devil will tell anybody trying to do anything God, you, nobody will come, nobody will pay attention to you. I mean all those kind of things, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you, when, you, when you really fail real bad, Joe, you know. Yeah. I think he has. I think he knows what I'm talking about. Exactly. If you have it, you will. I mean, I'll prophesy to you right now. I ain't been worried about this prophecy. You will. <laughs> you will somewhere along the line fail God real bad. And had to face God with it, Amen. But uh, but God was good, and uh, oh, he's, he he laid, And I I tried to be real patient with him. I said, Well, listen, I'm I'm sorry you feel that way, but I wouldn't do this for anybody but the Lord Jesus Christ. I wouldn't even attempt to come back to my hometown. If I was going to start a church, I'd go to Ohio somewhere, you know, or a southern part of the state, or up north, or somewhere. But God made me come back to my hometown and face everybody that I was at one time a topic of conversation for them, you know. And, and I look around and I see some of you, some of you has had to throw your ministry out there in front of people that maybe visited you in jail or saw you when you was at your lowest estate. You know, ain't that true, Bobby? Oh, yeah. It's true. Oh, me. But, but what you gonna, what you going to do? And I, I, I realize in some ways... I stunted the growth of this church through what I went through. Mm -hmm. I'm not stupid. I know that. I understand that. Could have probably been a bigger and way on down the road and done a lot a bit, uh, more things. But we've got a lot done. Amen. We've we've sent a lot of preachers out on the field. Yes. We've uh, we've got a lot of work done. We've we've baptized. <coughs> I tell you, when I, I guess the Lord trying to to sh show me His mark was upon me of acceptance. Well, we had old baptismal tank back there in the corner, and we was putting people in that tank just about every night. I mean, we were just stuffing them in there. <laughs> Sometimes six and seven a night, it was just unreal what God was doing. Uh, but I needed that support real bad, see. Uh, but to start off with, here's this guy come up and said, and he gave me every reason I shouldn't be doing it. So I'm ready, I'm about ready to say, oh, maybe I messed up here, you know. Uh, this old uh, guy said that, Said the Lord said PC. I said he saw a PC in the sky. Said I, I thought he meant uh, preach Christ. He said I think he might have meant plant corn. I don't know. <laughs> He's a farmer standing. He said I think now he might have meant preach uh, plant corn. So anyway, you 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 doubt yourself. You begin to doubt yourself. But then God goes through the process of proving Himself to you and showing you. And to make that long story short, uh, through the years ended up his wife. Ended up my piano player here for a time, and and I preached his funeral, mm -hmm. 
And by that time, and, and he, uh, he apologized to me a couple of years later. Brother Pat, I'm sorry I ever said that to you. I was so wrong. And if I can tell you the number of times that has happened to me. I had one pastor in this town that spent a lot of time from his pulpit cutting me up. And I, I really loved the man, and I, and, and I, I didn't know why he would feel this way. Because frankly, I mean, in our personal lives, I would probably put my record up against his, you know. But people forget. They get saved and they forget what manner of man they was. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't think we ought to ever really truly forget. Well, yeah. That, that kind of makes us thankful for where we're at today, right? Amen. But, but a lot of people do. They get real righteous and they get so righteous they're just, uh, somebody said they're so heavenly minded they're no earthly good. Mm, right. <laughs> Sometimes that's true. Without empathy, without, without uh, empathizing with people, without caring right. people's load and understanding what they're going through, you can't help people. No, you, you have to go through a situation where, and so I, I do understand a broken heart. I do understand disappointment mm -hmm. in myself. I do understand failure. And so God gave me this ministry, this reconciliation of grace that he gave me amen. and I thank him for that God. and I believe we've tried to put it to good use amen so we praise the Lord for that but he's talking about blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly you know if you if you want counsel go to someone that's 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 living the life they'll give you a true uh, vision amen. don't go out there to some old hypocrite or someone that, that you know they're just looking for something they're just they live on those kind of tales. They just love to hear negative things about the church, and it keeps them going. Give them something to get about, and they run around from the house to house, and they say, ah, "Did you hear about that? Did you hear about that?" It stir it, stir it, stir it, keeps them going. And Lord God knows we got enough problem without that. Amen. But it happens, and it's sad. That's right. And I, I learned how to stop that cold. And you know, I learned how to stop that. You know, there people come. I, I was sitting up there on my amplifier one night, and, and uh, this preacher came in that I know very well. And he hadn't been here but a few times. And he comes shook my hands and say, listen, it's not something I think you ought to know. And so he began to tell me this tale about this one particular brother. And I sat there, and I, I just wondered how long am I going to listen to this? And he went on, I said, look, hold on a minute. I said, do you know this to be true? Oh, yes. He said, yeah. I know it's true. I said, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I've known that brother a long, long time, and I just don't believe that. I just have a hard time believing that. And I said, but if that's true, I don't think we ought to keep passing this around. I think we ought to seek God for it. But I said, I really, I don't believe that. And I know he's human, and I know, you know, but I said, I just don't believe what you're telling me. And, and uh, he said, oh, he said, it's true. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, what, what do mean you make an appointment? Let's go talk to him about it. That's right. That's right. Oh, he didn't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then but when I finally pinned him down, somebody had told somebody had told somebody and told somebody. I don't know how many told somebody when it got to him. Yeah. So I said, you don't even know this to be true, do you? Well, he said, I mean, I, I'm sure they wouldn't. I said, I didn't ask you that. You know this to be true. No, no, he didn't know us. I knew you did. Now, why would you go around passing stuff around that you don't know to be true? That, I mean, that's, there's no benefit to that whatsoever. And if it was true, they need our prayers. Yeah. You know, they need our support somehow. And I, I, and I don't say to just lock arms with them and take part in their, in their sin that they are in that. But nevertheless, we have to be there, you know, when they want to get back up or whatever. I mean, that's the way I believe it. And, and uh, so, but I've had those things happen through the years. And I just refuse to be a garbage can. Or I have people call me on the phone. Did you hear about so and so? I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't care to hear that. I'm just going to tell you the truth. Because uh, it, uh, it, uh, it gets me thinking the wrong way. And I just, you know, if that's true, let's just pray about it. And just leave it there. And so after a while, people will quit, they'll quit dumping the garbage on you. They just quit. They don't come around. So people now come and tell me, did you hear about it? I said, no, I didn't hear about it. It's all everywhere. I said, well, they didn't bother to tell me. And the reason is they don't want to hear what I got to say about it. And if you accept that kind of garbage, they'll come and dump it on you. And you'll find yourself half the time tore up in the church over rumors that you hear. And, and uh, you know, and, and those are little foxes that spoil the vine. Yes. Keep you from receiving from God what you need. It, it'll, it'll block the channel from you and God. 
It will just clog things up. You won't be able to receive from God like you should. We have different people get in the pulpit. And you know, as a church, we're like a family. And we get to where we know one another. You know, over the years, we know how they are. This is stubborn, and this is here. So, you know, he's, <laughs> you should learn what they are, don't you? And our love covers that. We learn to cover that with our love. Well, that's just the way he is. And pray for him, go on. And then they get in the pulpit, and they begin to preach or speak. We look past that. We, we, we're listening for the voice of God. And, we're, and, we're, and we've learned how to, to receive from people that we don't even agree with on some things. You've got to do that. Because if you start picking people out, for you know the devil will show you everything that's wrong, you won't be able to see nothing from anybody. When they try to say something about God, you say, Yeah, they ought to say that. I know this and that and the other about it. See? Mm -hmm. This is really good training. This these little churches is wonderful training. A big church you can hide out. You can sit next to a guy uh, uh, in the put in, in your pew for uh, months and months and not know a thing about it. And so they're just a brother in the Lord and, that's, and in a little church or you get to know one another. Through prayer requests and different things and this one comes out, hey, did you know so and so is going through something? Well, and you mean that we're going to pray for them, let's pray for them. Uh -huh. But after a while you soon learn how some people are, you know. I mean some people are bipolar. Some people are some people have <laughs> really that's it's a condition, you know. And they got that. It's something they have to deal with all their life. And you soon learn to learn, you know, you you just pass a lot of times when things happen. You say, well, you know, they, 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 that's not them talking. That's that's their condition, you know. Just pray for them. You learn. It's a great lesson that you learn. You learn how to live and grow together in God and receive from God what you can and all of that other stuff you just kind of throw over your shoulder. Like I'm talking about eating them at good fish and throwing them bones over the shoulder. Yeah. You learn how to do that. Don't throw that back there on them. <laughs> That poor boy, he's got that load in there. He knows he's bold in there. Oh, I wish somebody had taught me things like this when I was real young. I struggled with things like this. I had to wade my way through. And, and, uh, and of course, the devil's the greatest weapon he has is to discourage you and make you believe that you're not getting anywhere. And, and he'll show you every negative thing. Uh, I'm sure you'd look around and say, what did I get myself into? <laughs> what in the world did I get myself into? And uh, <laughs> wherever there's people, there's disappointment. Uh, there's, uh, there's other things there. Besides that, we got a whole lot of spirit here. we got a whole, whole lot of flesh. <laughs> and so it's just, this uh, great spiritual word is working through a fleshly temple. And it picks up a certain amount of moss as it rolls along here. And you say, well, I just don't agree with Brother Pat on that. Just say, that's the moss. Don't worry about that. <laughs> don't get all hung up every time some preacher says something you don't agree with. That's just the moss. That's his thinking. You don't have to agree with that. But please don't just cut him off and don't hear anything else he says. Right. Uh, I made that statement uh, the, the last week. I was talking about, uh, you know, they did this experiment in, in uh, school. And they put a black dot on a big old piece of white poster board. Mm -hmm. What do you see? People after people would say, a black dot. What do you see? Well, it's a black dot. It's a black, black dot. All is white. And all you see is a black dot. Nobody's seen all this good. They right. just seen that one little thing they didn't like. I'm talking to your head now because that's the way it is. People come to church right after a while, they'll realize there's things they don't totally agree with. And say, well, I ain't going back there no more. Why? Why, he said this and this and this. <laughs> you don't get so upset about that. If you don't agree with that, I just don't agree with that. I love him. I don't agree with him, see? And if it hurt you real bad, go talk to him about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I've had people talk to me about things, and after a while I say, well, you know, maybe they're right about that. I don't know. I'll, I'll get to examine but Nobody knows everything. That's right. Right? And we're all human. Yes, right. And we're all trying to seek God for ourselves. Uh, and just uh, be secure in your own self. And listen to God. And listen to many voices. It won't, it won't kill you to listen to other people. And consider out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he said, uh, 
Blessed is this man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Now this is, this is what occurs when you sit in the counsel of the ungodly. You find yourself standing in the way of sinners. That's not talking about standing where the sinners are. That's being standing in a position where they can't get in. Right. right. You're actually standing in the way in of the sinners. Way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, people pick out the worst Christian in this building and say, that's where they are down at the Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the way they are. And I know I don't control over what they do out there in their neighborhoods, right? Cuss the neighbor out and say, yeah, that's the way they do down there at Pat Davis Church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it'll happen every time. You'd be surprised the things that people say. Well, they tell me you teach this, that, that, and some of that God is crazy stuff you ever heard in your life. But that's just, that's people. That's the way people are. And, and I'm not overly sensitive. You know, I realize that they didn't speak well of Jesus. They said he was a glutton and a wine bibber. Yes, did. And he had a devil. I mean, a lot of people had a lot to say about Jesus. But yet we know that he healed thousands and he, he did many great works. I believe the Bible said he went about doing good. That's all he did and they, and they killed him for that because they, like, they didn't like some of the words he said. He didn't like what he said to them. I didn't like what he said to me. Well, you might consider where it's the truth. It might, if you listen to it, it might do you good if it's the truth, right? The truth is that it's a powerful thing. It can wound you real bad. I've been wounded by it, but it can make you whole too. The truth is very powerful. If you're someone so bullheaded, you won't see the truth. Every time somebody says the truth, you run away. You can't be helped. No, because the truth will cut you. You come face to face with the truth. I've seen a lot of things. I, you know, I said this while ago joking, but I'm serious. There's times I want to tear that page out. I didn't like what that said. Because I was guilty, that's why. I was, you know, you said, I didn't want to admit it, and there it was facing me. Now, now what am I going to do with it? One thing about it, when you hear the truth, you got to do one of three things. you got to accept it, or you got to reject it, or you got to build up some thing against it. You know, and some people sit around the truth for years, and they reject it, reject it, and they get crusted over like an old... Uh, cornfield out there, you, you couldn't you couldn't plant nothing on them. You want to, it's all hardened and caked over. <clears throat> and that's what people get that way. Their heart gets hardened. And you can get up and say the God awful things. And they don't even touch them. I mean, they build up a resistance.